Hey guys, so for this video, we're going to be covering the Fly Ass or Super Pacific in terms of our top five. Um, again, we do have the QE lads once again, so how are you doing, man? I'm doing very well, mate. They say that the Fly Half, it's like the glue that holds the back line together. Some great Fly Halves currently, and of course we should mention, this is for up till this stage of the competition, round 11. So before then, this is what we're judging it off. Afterwards, these Fly Halves could have terrible ends to their seasons. Some may not even make the playoffs. Some could kick it like 2% accuracy, but these other ones that we've found in the first rounds have been able to really step up and hopefully continue to perform. Exactly, exactly. Before we get into this, make sure, guys, obviously you like the video, click the like button, guys. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I will leave a link towards uh, the QB Lads channel, so check that in the description below. But um, yeah, besides that, let's just crack into this. So, starting with you, man, give us your fifth place in terms of your top five in terms of who's got your fifth slot for fly outs within super pacific this year well i'm always very indecisive so i actually have about seven players but i won't mention the ones who are just outside of the top five for now but the man at number five for myself i have gone with william harvelli the reason for that i feel like he's been very strong for moana pacifica throughout the start of the competition it really baffles me why they aren't playing him at fly half more. They are giving Christian Liliafano that honour at the moment, which I understand the experience, but William Harvilli was lighting the comp on fire in those early rounds. He's got some great stats behind him. 15 defenders beaten, 220 plus metres carried. He's had three try assists. They are going to be playing him at fullback this weekend, so I do hope that that works out pretty well for him and we can start to see some more stats just like that, because if they were playing in the starting fly half throughout the rest of the competition and all of the games so far, I honestly think he'd be higher up on my top five. Yeah, no, I I actually agree with that as well. I think he's been really impressive for, for the Mono Pacifica. And again, he's a player, unfortunately, that has just missed out for me. But again, he's kind of one of those, I guess, like in the conversation of getting into the top five. But yeah, it's just missed out. For my fifth position, actually, I've gone with a surprise one here, which may surprise you, but I've actually gone with Steven Parafetta here. Um, mm. He's one where he's had, a, he's had a very good season for the Blues, but unfortunately, throughout, you know, he hasn't played the, the last three games, and I think that's where the Blues have actually been really the best, I'd say, throughout this season, is that actually when like, we've we've actually had some good performances, uh, you know, particularly against the Reds, the likes, the, the likes of Western Force, We've had some good games. We've had some good games. High scoring, this at least. Wait, so, but it, wait so, sorry, I need clarification here. So you <laughs> said they've got better since he stopped playing fly half. So no, no, he's no. your pick? Again, Steven Perfetta has an impressive season, but just because he's missed out on those last three games, I just, I've had to put him lower in my list. But if it wasn't for those games, then he would have been much higher. So moving on towards the number number four this is probably the obscure one out of the bunch that I've selected in terms of my top five, but I think he just, he just deserves a mention because I've been very impressed by him throughout the season. I've actually gone with Armstrong Guvala here at the number four position. And he's someone where I think like not a lot of people will maybe agree with me. I, I don't know. You have to watch a lot of Super P if maybe <laughs> to get where I'm going with this. He scored 74 points so far this season, and he's had two tries to his name. And yes, he hasn't any had any tries in that. And it's not like he's not like the um, when you look at the stats, it doesn't go in his favor. But if you look at the games, he's definitely been a very um, capable hand to have in terms of number 10. His kicking has been great, uh, I think, for the Fijian draw. And he's been really a, a lot, a lot of it has been gone through him in terms of, like, kind of the playmaking and that. And he's kind of started that kind of um, the tries off, you could say, for a lot of the players they've made. So I've been really impressed by him. And again, he kind of breaks the line uh, a lot of the time as well. And that's an another thing which you want within a fly up. So he's kind of shown that throughout the last few games. And I just think he deserves a mention. And I think fourth is kind of a, a good area to put him in because he's been very impressive for Fijian draw. Again, I don't think I could put him higher because I think the other three have been just really good this season um and i'll get into them later on but um again for for your case who do you set it at your, at your number four so for myself and number four on my list i've actually gone with ben donaldson for the western Ooh, force okay now okay. it's, a, it's okay. probably a little bit of a shout similar to your uh as i armstrong okay. ravula situation but i just feel like the western force as a whole have been a little bit disappointing this year but there's been certain players for them that have actually really stepped up and I'm hoping that those are the players that eventually do get, I know it sounds bad, but signed for a club that's doing a little bit better in terms of some results. But, you know, Donaldson, 325 metres carried as a fly half is 
pretty impressive. Definitely on a site that spends a majority of the time defending in important yeah. games. Yeah. I mean, you look at Carlo Tizano, that man's made about 150 tackles. So that yeah, tells you yeah. how much they've had to defend throughout their games. He's had 18 defenders beaten, six clean breaks, six try assists, and also seven offloads there. So the stats say that he is definitely up there in terms of one of the best fly halves in the competition. And when you see him on the field, Yes, there's certain games that you can say is the exception when they end up in a bit more of a struggling contest. Maybe he disappears a little bit, but Mm -hmm. overall, I still feel like he's been relatively solid and 65 points to his name, not too bad either. Yeah, not too shabby. But um, yeah, again, he's definitely someone I thought of. And like you said, he's just been all over the place for the Western Force and has kind of created a lot of their um, their kind of tries in a sense. So yeah, no, it's a good good bit that... um, I guess in terms of the third pick, however, who have you gone for that? Because this this is where I think I think we could have similar players here in our top three. It just depends where you put them in. And I think, just to be clear, by the way, guys, I'm not sure if this is the way you feel. I think this top three, it's like you have the two, but then like the, this this top three is like a level above, I think, the three form we've seen throughout this season. So, again, this could be – I'm not sure if you have the same top three as me, but I'd like to think we have the same players. So, who have you gone with your number three spot? Wouldn't that be a big mistake if we had two uh, uh, let's see. completely let's see. different players in two <laughs> and three? But for myself, number three, I've gone Noah Lelisio. He's had 91 points. He's had 385 metres carried throughout the season. 13 defenders beat and six try assists. And he's also made the 53 tackles, which is why he does go a little bit higher, in my opinion, than some of those other players that I've already mentioned. But I think that for a young player that he's already had so much... I guess, adversity thrown his way in terms of people not liking him as an Aussie fly half, as a Brumbies fly half. He gets a lot of stick, but, you know, he's starting to really get into his work throughout this season, and there is a bit of a gap at fly half, you'd have to say, for the Wallabies, unless, of course, maybe Quake Cooper's coming back, although I think Eddie burned that bridge. So I think that it is going to have to be a young guy to make his way in there, and at the moment I think it's a two-horse race. And the other man's at number two for myself. But who have you got as your number three, Tim? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, uh, again, this is, I think we're in a very similar situation here because in this case, I've actually gone with Carter Gordon to finish, mm-hmm. uh, to be my free position here. Again, there's not a lot that separates these two, just to keep, just to let you guys know. I mean, in terms of the stats, yes. I mean, you could, you could make a point where Carter Gordon's scored, what, 73 points. He said four tries to his name, this four tries to his name, and five tries to his. So, in terms of uh, tries and try assists, he's definitely ahead of Noah Lasseo. Yeah, for Connor Gordon, he's been excellent for the Rebels. I mean, they've been – he's really – it's kind of him alone that's in my – I mean, this is harsh to say, but like, I think him alone is what's allowed the, the Rebels to be so high on, on the table so far. And, yeah, he's just been excellent for them. I mean, he's really been able to kind of capitalize on, I guess, mistakes of the opponents because I think he's had, what, two intercept tries so far that I can think of. But, uh, yeah, he's just an excellent player. He's kind of continued his form from what we saw last year kind of his break, breakthrough season last year, and he's kind of stepped up at another level, in all honesty, for this year. So, yeah, I think it's been really impressive for the Rebels. And, yeah, just hopefully he's able to kind of continue that and kind of continue that going to the playoffs, hopefully. But, um, but yeah, like uh, like the, like like you mentioned, this is kind of a reverse role for me now because I've now gone with Nola So here at the number two position. And, like you said, he's been excellent. You know, he scored 91 points this season. You know, he's a one try to his name, four try assists. So, he's definitely been able to you know, kind of um, get around uh, teams, kind of, uh, you know, his playmaking skills have been off the charts. You know, he went to Toulon, actually, um, during the kind of World, uh, Rugby World Cup spell, because, you know, he wasn't selected during that time, but just kind of, just kind of, um, just work on his game a bit more. And it seems that it's it's, it's kind of worked out um, in his favor, actually. And he's one of those players, like you said, he gets a lot of stick, but honestly, I'm... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say now because I'll probably make a video on this in the future, um, around my kind of Wallaby side. But it's definitely between No Lasseo and Carter Gordon for that ten spot. I just think it, it has to be one of them too. Again, you could maybe throw Ben Donaldson's name in the conversation because he can play that position. But again, we've also seen him play at fifteen, so he's kind of versatile in that area. But um, but yeah, I definitely. It, it's definitely between No Lasseo and Carter Gordon. So for you then, uh, who are you going for your number two pick then? Well, number two, no surprises here. I have got Carter Gordon. 25 defenders beaten, four tackles, 73 points, 369 metres carried. He had to be up there somewhere. So decided to put him in number two. And like you said, I honestly think it's between those three that I've got at two, three, and four. 
Is that concerning for the Wallabies, do you think? Or do you think they're in good hands good. with those three? That's good. I, I, I'm happy they have options because it's, it's mm. in the, they're also young options as well. Because in the past they've had to rely on the the old uh, kind of the the experienced guys, which is it's good to have that because you, you do need experience in your side. But honestly, when it comes towards that ten position, you want to develop players, and I think now it's now the start of a new cycle. What better time to do it than have three mm. kind of free? I'm not saying new prospects, but free prospects who are going eyeing up a ten position. So you want to have kind of um, a challenge. And I think it's good that all three of them have had good season so far. So, again, like I said, um, there's only one one player who's going to get it. So it's going to be fascinating to see what kind of happens later down the line. But um, but for now, I'm, I'm definitely not – I mean, Carter Gordon and Nola Sarah, I think, on a very similar level. So, like, two and three is kind of in, kind of interchanges for me. But um, I believe we do probably have the same player when it comes to uh, number one here. But um, I'll, I'll let you just say it. Like, who, who's your number one? Tom Liner. No, it's oh, not, unfortunately. Um, no, it's it's Damian McKenzie. Of course, D Mac gonna be at the top of the bunch for myself. Chiefs fly half. He's had over hundred points this season, 103 to be precise, 455 meters carried, 29 defenders beaten, eleven offloads, three try assists, five clean breaks. The list goes on for him. And yeah. do you know what the crazy thing is? At times you know, he's he's had a couple average games in there. And the fact that he's still got right. all yeah. of those stats that he's got, yeah. you know, I think he's got a fair shot at being in the All Blacks. Just a little prediction there. Yes. Like, 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 <laughs> like a, a good shot to you know, he's got a crack. But I do agree with you that I, I'm not going to say I wasn't – I, I was I was considering it. I'm not going to say I was going to do it, but I was considering actually not putting him in mind at number one because, like you said, he's had a few average games in there like where he hasn't stepped up to the level which we kind of expect him to because, again, it's not just down to him, but the Chiefs just haven't had the best of seasons for what we, what we thought they would because, honestly, going into the season, I think the Chiefs – were one of the favorites to actually win this kind of competition. I'm not saying they can still do it, by the way, guys. They can still do it. I'm just saying that they're not in the position they're meant to be for what people have kind of talked about them um, at the start of the season. So it's one of those where, again, McKenzie's been brilliant. As you said, the stats kind of show by show for it. I mean, he's been excellent for the Chiefs, getting 100, 103 points, the most in, in Super Bowl so far. But the, the number two and three, like I said, they're, they're kind of all bunched together. Like normally you would say like mm. okay, one's kind of a clear standalone, but actually, I think it's a lot closer to the one most people would say. I, I, I think that's, what, that's kind of the best way I can sum it up. But um, but yeah, I mean, just in, in terms of kind of the other um, players you had kind of mentioned, I guess who just missed out because I know one of them you said was um, Armstrong Ubala. Who was the other one that kind of missed out for you? I actually had a little bit of an honourable mention for Tane Edmund for the Waratahs. I feel I like, like he's actually had a pretty decent. Yes. season overall so i thought he was worth a bit of a shot 82 points so far throughout the season yeah. and he's also been i guess a little bit of a consistent option in a slightly inconsistent waratah's backline like he seems to always have decent ish yeah. games but then he's also done a couple that haven't been flashed so i think that's what dropped him a little bit more for me but still i think has had a pretty strong season and if there was an injury for a gordon no, Alessio or Donaldson, I think that Edmund would be that next guy who gets the call-up, and he may even still get a call-up ahead of one of those three. We don't really know what Joe Schmidt is looking at for his options at the moment. Maybe all four of them get calls up. You never know. It, it, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. Um, again, like in terms of my kind of players that, that didn't make our list, but just um, I know that you, you already talked about William Avili, but he's definitely someone that I was thinking of who just missed out for me. Another name we haven't mentioned is actually Bryn Cameron for the Hurricanes. I think he's had a decent season for them. Um, Statistically, again, though, he actually – it didn't look yeah. flash on the statistics. This is what I was going to say. So him, which I was surprised about. Exactly. So this is the thing is that you, you would expect the Hurricanes 10 to be pretty good in terms of – from a stats standpoint. But actually, he isn't the guy they kind of go through from a lot of their plays. It's, mm. you know, it's going to be Jordy Barrett they kind of run the plays through, which is not – it's not a surprise or anything. It, it doesn't downplay him at all. It's just it's more like where – they have a system in place where they want to get the ball out quickly. And they do it, obviously, well, Cameron gets the ball out towards Jordy Barrett, but it's Jordy Barrett who kind of makes the play happen. So it's 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 one of those where, yeah, he, the stats obviously are in his favor. But again, he's had an impressive season, I think, for the Hurricanes. And I, I included him in my um, in my All Blacks kind of um, score prediction and all that, just because I think he deserved a mention just for the season he ha he's had. But um, 
But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of any other players because I can You could. I'm not saying he's getting him now because he hasn't. His form hasn't been good recently. But Reese Patchell at the very start of the season, like, oh, like he had like, like two games, like, two or three games. He's like, okay, there's there's something about him here, but but mm. no, there's I think it's kind of no. falling off now a bit. But um, but yeah, no, that's kind of it, folks. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that episode in terms of top five um, for fly apps. Again, the next one I believe we're covering is scrum apps, so keep an eye out for that. It'll be coming out next week. But, um, yeah, just make sure to leave a comment below letting us know you, your top five for fly apps for this current Super Bowl season. And, um, yeah, make sure to give it a like, guys. Subscribe to our channel. Check out the Kiwi Lads. And, um, yeah, see you guys next time.